وإذا قيل انشزوا فانشزوا يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما تعملون خبير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فأن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So all the praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, seek his aid and his forgiveness and protection against our evil self and wrongdoings He whom Allah guides, there is none to lead astray and he whom Allah misguides, there is none to guide. I bear witness there is no God worthy of worship, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a servant and messenger. So tonight, brothers, inshallah, we'll talk about a very important subject regarding the salah. Alhamdulillah, in the few weeks and months, in this blessed place, we spoke about the Tahara and the Salah, and we covered a lot of the important issues regarding Salah, which is to do with the rules, the things that you have to do, how to perform your Salah in a proper way. But there is very important issue regarding the Salah, <clears throat> which we call it, or the scholars call it, al khushu' fi Salah. How to attain khushu'a, how your heart will be or will reach tranquility in the salah, how you will think that this salah is the last salah you might do and you'd like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this salah fully. In any work we do. <clears throat> Most of the time, we try our best to show the best of our efforts. For example, if someone he has an interview, and in that interview he is supposed to give a presentation, you'll find him trying to dress properly and to go over the presentation three, four, ten times, it depends, and to make that presenta presentation attractive and, you know, to the point, so he will impress the people who will interview uh, him or her and give them the job. Now, this is for in the daily life, and I am sure anyone working in any place, they try their best most of the time to perform in a best way. Otherwise, if their boss notice that the work that they are doing is not right, they don't give enough effort, so you say, you know, they will give you first warning, second warning, then after that, Sorry, we don't want you here. Now the Salah 
it is the key to Jannah. This is the difference between Salah and everything else. Now, in the presentation, it is a key for a job. And you don't know this job will last or not, or you like it or not. But here we are talking about Jannah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أول ما يحاسب به العبد يوم القيامة الصلاة فإن صلحت صلح سائر عمله وإن فسدت فسد سائر عمله So the first thing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will hold you for an account on the day of judgment is the salah. If it is good, fine, complete, then all the other deeds will be good. And if it is incomplete, you didn't perform it in the right way, you didn't keep on time, many things in the salah, then the other actions, unfortunately, will be the same. So this is why this, this khushu' the khushu' in the salah is a very important issue. That we'd like when we pray to have if we can 100 percent of the reward because definitely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the reward for every salah we don't know how many hasan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us but we know there is some hints for example we know as many ayahs you read in the salah then for every letter there is 10 hasan for every tasbih you say, there will be ten hasan. So in the adhkar you say in the salah, there is hasanat for it. But the salah as, it in, as a whole procedure, there is a certain reward for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared it. We don't know. We don't know how, much, how many hasan you will get for salat al-fajr or dhuhr or asr or maghrib al-ajr. We know, as the Nabi Sallallahu he said, when they asked him about, about the Salah, أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ كَانَ عَلَى بَابِ أَحَدِكُمْ نَهْرٌ يَغْتَسِلُ فِيهِ خَمْسْ مَرَّاتِ فِي الْيَوْمِ هَلْ يَبْقَى مِدْرَانِهِ شَيْءٍ قَالُوا لَا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ الصَّلَاةِ He said, what do you think if there is a river in front, in front of you, of your house, and you have a bath in that river every day. Do you think any dirt will remain? They said, no. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the salah is the same. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, salatu ila salam mukaffiratun lima baynahuma. So, salah to the other salah will remove, <coughs> will remove or wipe off, wipe off the bad deeds you do between the two salahs. Now, when we attain the, the khushu' and the salah, then, bi'idhnillah, we'll get the, fir, the full reward. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi spoke about this. He said, to the nearest meaning, that the slave of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will pray, and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will write, for him, half of it, or one-fifth of it, or one-tenth of it, and so on. So, some people maybe when they, when they pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write for them the whole salah, and some half, some quarter, some one-fifth, some ten percent, some zero percent. It depends. So inshallah tonight we'll talk about how we can attain this. And at the end of the day, what I'm going to say is just an effort that will help me and you to attain this. And I hope inshallah this will help every one of us to improve the quality of <coughs> Our salah, inshallah. Now, this this subject, <clears throat> there is many scholars spoke about it. 
in different in different issues and one of the great scholars spoke about it is Imam Qayyim al jawziya in uh, in different books and uh, and he spoke about this in Madarij al-Salikin and in Zad al-Ma'ad and I found <coughs> one of the scholars and he's the one who's in, in charge of uh, the internet site question and answer or Islam question and answer with Muhammad Salih al-Mundid and mashallah he uh, collected many of the sayings of different scholars and put it under a title of 33 reason or ideas to improve the khushu. So many of the things that I'll say tonight inshallah will be just from what that brother uh, or that sheikh said and also what Imam Al-Qayyim Rahmatullah Alayhi said. Now, we know that there is a battle between the Muslim and the Shaitan all the time. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala kicked the Shaitan from the Jannah, He said, I will come from their right, from their left, in front of them and from their back, and I will try, in a way, I'll try my best to misguide, misguide them. So this is the commitment of the shaitan. So firstly, shaitan will try to prevent you from the salah, to say to you, don't pray. When he hears the adhan, he will make a big noise to make the people unable to hear the adhan. Then, when the person starts to pray, he'll come to him and try to remind him of different things, which is not related to the Sahara. And this is what we call it al-waswas. So, we understand now that shaitan is trying to do his job, or not his job, what he is uh, uh, trying to do to prevent you from performing your salah in a right way. Now, as Muslims, we should look to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people who are praying. He said at the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ قَاشَعُونَ So indeed, the believers are successful. Those who are humble in their salah, those do ha they, who have khushu' in their, in their salah. It was reported that Mujahid said, and stand before Allah with obedience, Al-Baqarah. Interpretation of the meaning, part of obedience is to bow, to be uh, submissive, to lower one's gaze, and to humble one, uh, oneself out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he be glorified. And this is uh, mentioned in a very good book called Ta'zim Qadr al-Salah lil-Imam al-Marwuzi. The site of khushu' is the heart. So the place of the khushu' al-qalb, the heart. And its effects are manifested in the physical body. So, firstly, you have to have the khushu' in your heart. When you, when you have the khushu' in your heart, this will be reflected on your limbs, in your eyes, in your hands, in your head, on everything. The various 
uh, faculties follow the heart if the heart is corrupted by negligence or uh, the whispers from shaitan the worship of the body's limbs will also be corrupt the heart is like a king and the faculties are like his troops who follow his, his orders and go where they are commanded so the heart is like the king he order the limbs and they will follow him if the heart has has khushua, then all the other limbs will have khushua. if there is no khushua in the heart then there is no khushua on the limbs if the king is disposed or deposed his followers are lost which is like what happens when the heart does not worship in a proper way Hudayfa radiallahu an used to say beware of the khushu' of hypocrisy he was asked what is the khushu' of hypocrisy he said when the body shows khushu' but there is no khushu' on the heart so maybe you are standing looking at the sujood place and these things but your heart is equipped by other things other than the salah so here, the khushu' we are talking about is khushu' al-qalb, not khushu' the limbs. And as I said, oh, the scholars, they said, when the khushu' of the qalb is there, then it automatically reflects on the limbs. So maybe you have khushu' on the limbs, but you don't have khushu' in the heart. But if there is khushu' in the heart, definitely there will be khushu' on the limbs and it is narrated that I think Hudayfa saw a man you know keep moving in the salah and he said لو خشع قلبه لخشع الجوارح if his heart has khushu' then his limbs will have khushu' so Fudayr ibn Ayyad said it was disliked for a man to show more khushu' than he had in his heart so don't try to make to show more khushu' in the way you stand and look more than what you have khushu' in the qalb in your heart the heart is the first place to have khushu' on one of them saw a man showing khushu' in his shoulders and body and said oh so and so khushu' is here and he pointed to his chest not here and he pointed to the shoulder so this is one of the statements Imam Al-Qayyim Rahmatullah mentioned Madarj Salikin that when he saw a man that you know trying to make khushu' showing the khushu' in, in the shoulders and the head he said Al khushu' huna Al khushu' huna in the not on the lips on the lips Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah said explaining the difference between the khushu' of true faith and the khushu' of hypocrisy he said the khushu' of true faith is when the heart feels aware and humble before the greatness and the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is filled with awe fear and shyness so the heart is utterly humbled before Allah and broken as it were with fear shyness love and the recognition of the blessings of Allah and its own sins so no doubt the khushu' of the heart is followed by the khushu' of the body as for the khushu' of hypocrisy it is something that is put on with a great show but there is no khushu' in the heart this is the beautiful explanation of Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi, to differentiate between the khushu' of the true believers and the khushu' of al-munafiqeen khushu' al-munafiqeen just shape but khushu' al-mu'mineen is in the heart so when you have the khushu' in the heart then really this is what required and this is 
what the ayah of Surah Al-Mu'minun talking about قبل قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون One of the Sahaba used to say I seek refuge with Allah from the khushu' of hypocrisy It was said to him What is the khushu' of hypocrisy? He said when the body appears to have khushu' but there is no khushu' in the heart the person who truly feels khushu' before Allah is a person who no longer feels the flames of physical desire. His heart is pure and is filled with the light of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His own selfish drive, uh, his own selfish desires have died because of the fear and all which have filled his heart to overflowing so that his physical limbs have calmed down. His heart has become dignified and feels secure in Allah, the remembrance of him and tranquility descends upon him from his Lord. So he has become humble, mukhbit before Allah. And the one who is humble is the one who is assured. Land that is mukhbit is land that is low lying. This is the says of Nuqayr. In which water settles. So the heart that is mukhbit is humble and content. Like a low lying spot of a land into which water flows and settles. The sign of this is that a person prostrates to his Lord out of respect and humility and never raises his head until he meets him. The arrogant heart, on the other hand, is one that is content with its arrogance and raises itself up like an elevated portion of land in which water never settles. This is the khushu' of true faith. What a beautiful explanation that Imam Qayyim put here. You know when you have a piece of land and that piece of land just like this so there is it, it is a little bit lower so when the, the water comes so it will stay in it but if it is flat so the water runs and doesn't leave any traces this is the khushua when the qalb become mukhbit have khushua humbleness then the khushu' stays there and made changes in that in that heart to make you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when that heart is solid, it is hard. Then the water comes and runs, but doesn't leave and traces there. So this is the beautiful explanation that Imqayim Rahmatullah put. When he spoke about al khushu' in his book Al-Wabil Al-Sayyib, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. And this is, you know, it's a reminder, before we go further in this, it's a reminder of every one of us. So, which type is my heart? Is it that heart which reaches Al-Ikhbat, that it is lower itself to receive the commands of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, and all the time ready to respond and fill it with Allah's love or it is full of this dunya so there is no way, no place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there so when the ayahs of Allah when the signs of Allah comes it goes it passes that heart without any effect may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save all of us of being the second part and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among the people who have khushu' and ikhbat As for overdoing it and the khushu' of hypocrisy, this is the attitude of a person who tries to make a great show of khushu' but deep down he is still filled with desires. So on the outside he appears to have khushu' but the snake of the valley and the lion of the forest resides within him watching for prey. 
again this is what Ibn al qayyim said so again brothers when the heart is full of desires then these lions as he said and uh, there is no place for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the heart is full of desire for sure when a prayer happens when a person empties his heart for its prayer and focuses on it to the exclusion of all of all else and prefers it to everything else only then does, does he find comfort and joy in it as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said جعلت قرة عيني في الصلاة and my joy has been made in salah and this is mentioned in tafsir ibn kathir in nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brothers he said جعلت قرة عيني في الصلاة my joy has been made in salah what a beautiful explanation of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the salah so when he'd like to enjoy himself, he will pray. And really, if we check ourselves, do we reach this? Do we reach the status that if I'd like to enjoy my time, I just go and pray? Or if I'd like to enjoy my time, I just go and do something else? This is our great Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My joy has been made in Salah. He used to say to Bilal Radiallahu An, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Relax us with it, O Bilal. Allahu Akbar. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like to relax, he will pray. Because this is the relaxation of the heart, which is the main thing. Because if the heart is occupied and not moving at all, then there is no relaxation. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to say to Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal, relax us with it. Allah has mentioned al khashi'ina wal khashi'at, men and women who are humble before their Lord. And describe this quality as one of the qualities of those who are chosen. He tells us that, that he has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward, paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about categories of people who promise paradise, he said, Wal khashi'ina, wal khashi'at. And one of the benefits of khushu is that it makes prayer easier for a person. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, and seek help in patience and salah. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu sta'inu bil sabri wa salah. In other ayah, wa sta'inu bil sabri wa salah wa innaha la kabiratun illa ala al-khashi'een. And seek help in patience and salah the prayer and truly it is extremely heavy and hard except for al khashi'in i.e. the true believers those who obey Allah with full submission fear much from his punishment and believe in his promise and his warnings the meaning is that the burden of prayer is heavy indeed except for those who have khushu'a and this is what Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi mentioned when he spoke about this ayah. So in this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ So seek help by patience and salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is heavy, except for whom? Those who attain khushu'ah. So this means that when you have khushu'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the salah easy for you. Will make the life easy for you. Especially when you combine between sabr wa salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned joined the sabr wa salah in many ayahs in the Quran. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاه ان الله مع الصابرين او يو بيليف سيك هيلب ثرو بيشنس اند صلاه اند انديد الله سبحانه وتعالى از وذ ذوز هو ار بيشنت سو هير ون اوف ذا بينيفيتس اوف هافينج خشوع ان ذا صلاه ذات وين يو هاف خشوع ذا صلاه ان ات سيلف ويل بي ايزي Because your heart will be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khushu' is very important. But it's something that it is easily lost and is rarely seen. Especially in our own times, which are the last times. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Hudayfa, the first thing to be lifted up, taken away from this ummah will be khushu'a. So the first thing will be lifted up from this ummah is that for sure until you will see no one who has for sure and this mentioned al-haythami and it was reported by al-tabarani in al-kabir and it is mad is hasan and shaykh al-bar rahmatullah alayhi said it is hasan so nabi sallallahu alayhi wa spoke about this And he mentioned one of the first things that will be taken al khushu' and you'll come to the masjid and you, you'll find it is hard to find people who has khushu' in their salah. Now, is khushu' obligatory? So if we don't have complete khushu' then the salah invalid or it is something recommended. Now here, Imam bin Taymiyyah rahmatullah Ali, he spoke about this issue and he's with the idea or the opinion that al khushu' is obligatory in the salah. And he supported this, this opinion by the understanding of the verses of the Quran. So I read what Imam Taymiyyah said, and we try to understand to understand that. According to the most correct view, khushu' is obligatory. Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Allah, may he be exalted, says, and seek help in patience and salah. The prayer and truly, it is extremely heavy and hard except for Al-Khashayin. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 45. This implies condemnation of those who are not Khashayin. So, when you think about the Ayah, and this is the understanding of Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised those who have khushu'ah. So the opposite, those who doesn't have khushu'ah will be Condemned because praising, when I praise someone to do something, this means that if he doesn't do it, he will be condemned because of that. So this is what Imam Shaykh Al-Islam bin Taymiyyah said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Al-Khashi'een here, but on the other hand, or this means that those who doesn't have Khashi'een, uh, Khushu'a in their Salah, will be condemned because they lost that. So this implies condemnation of those who are not khashirin. Condemnation only applies when something obligatory is not done. Or when something forbidden is done. If those who do not have khushu' are, are to be condemned, this indicates that khushu' is obligatory. Why? The fact that khushu' is obligatory is also indicated by the ayat, successful indeed are the believers, qad aflah al mu'minun. الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون successful indeed are the believers those who offer their salah prayers with all solemnity and full submissiveness these are indeed the inheritors who shall inherit the firdaus أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون these are indeed the inheritors who shall inherit the firdaus paradise they shall dwell therein forever This is in Surah Al-Mu'minun. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that these are the ones who will inherit firdaus, paradise, which implies that no one else will do so. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who have these categories, which is mentioned surat, at the beginning of surat al-mu'minun, they will inherit the firdaus. And the first category is الَّذِينَهُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهُمْ خَاشِعُونَ Then the other, the other uh, thing وَالَّذِينَهُمْ عَلَّقُوا وَمُعْرِضُونَ وَالَّذِينَهُمْ يَفْرُوجُ وَالْحَافِرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the other people. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the end of these ayahs that these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described at the beginning of this ayah, of this surah, they will be the inheritors of al-Firdaus al-A'la. This means that those who will be entitled to enter the firdaus al-a'la are these people only. So those who don't have khushu and their salah, they will not be among the people who will go to the firdaus al-a'la. So this is how important to have uh, the khushu. So Imam bin Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi hears, said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what that what that these are the ones who will inherit for those which implies that no one else will do so for sure is obligatory in prayer and this includes calmness and for sure the original says for sure perhaps what is uh, and for sure meaning uh, submission humility whoever picks like uh, a crow in his sujood, prostration, does not have khushu'ah. And whoever does not raise his head fully from rukur, bowing and pose for a while before going down into sujood is not calm because calmness implies doing these things at a major uh, pace. So the person who does not do things at a major pace is not calm. Whoever is not calm does not have khushu'ah in his rukur or sujood. And whoever does not have khushu'a is a sinner. You remember, brothers, when we spoke about arkan al-salah and the hadith when Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke to that person who came to the masjid and prayed, and the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Irja fa salli go back, pray again because you didn't pray, and said to him that uh, three times. Then he told him. And in in the rukur, al-irtifaa min rukur, standing up from rukur, sujood, sitting between the two sajda, in all of them, he used to say, hatta tatma'in, until you reach calmness. So al-itma'inan fi sujood, al-itma'inan fi rukur, al-itma'inan fi al-irtifaa min rukur, al-itma'inan fi al-jalsa bayna sajdatayn, all, in all these, uh, parts of the salah, this is rukun. You have to reach calmness. If you don't reach calmness, then this means that you your salah is invalid because this is a rukun in, in, the, in the salah. And you remember what we said at the beginning, that when there is khushu in the salah, it will be reflected in the actions in the salah. So I cannot understand that someone, he has khushu in his heart, then when he goes to, to make rukur, he will do like this, you know, like spring. So go down and go up quickly without reaching calmness, even without saying Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim in a proper way. Or someone, as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that like a crow, goes down and uh, get up quickly. So these, these actions, the Salah, is a reflection that there is no khushu'a in the qalb or in the heart. Then Imam Taymiyyah said, another indication that khushu' in a prayer is obligatory is the fact that the Prophet وسلم, warned those who do not have khushu' such as the one who lifts up his gaze to the sky in a prayer because this movement and raising the gaze goes against the idea of khushu'. So Nabi وسلم, he said, أو لتقطفن أبصارهم. So Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم he warned those who when they stand up from the rukur they just look up like this 
and he said if they don't uh, stop that, they might, you know, their site will be take, taken off from, uh, from them. So it is a warning, and this indicates that these people, they don't have for sure, because if you have for sure, then you look down, you don't look, look up. This is against, against the Khushu. Concerning the virtues of Khushu and as a warning to the one who neglects, the Prophet Sallallahu said, five prayers which Allah has made obligatory. Whoever does wudu pro properly for them, prays them on time, does ruku properly, and has perfect Khushu, it is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will be forgiven. But whoever does not do this has no such promise. If Allah wishes, he will forgive him. And if he wishes, he will punish him. And this is reported by Abu Dawood. And it is Hadith Sahih. As Sheikh Al-Bani mentioned in Sahih Al-Jana Sahih. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said here that the one who complete or perform his salah in a proper way and before that he done the wudu in a proper way, then there's a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter him Jannah. Now, if one doesn't fulfill all these requirements, then he has no guarantee. He might be punished or he might be forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the things that help us to have khushu' and prayer, we find that they may be divided into types, in two types. Things that help you to have and strengthen, strengthen khushu' and warding of the things that reduce and weaken khushu'. Again, Sheikh Islam bin Taymiyyah rahmatullahi spoke very beautiful word, words on this subject. He said, Two things help us to develop khushu. A strong desire to do what is obligatory and weakness of distraction. So you need two things. One thing to push you to do more and other thing to stop the distraction which is weakening your khushu. So you have to work in two ways. One way to increase your khushu, to make it perfect, to make it better and the other one, to work on the things that distract you during your salah and make your heart occupied by other things or your eyes or your ears. And so when you take away these things which distract you from the salah and concentrate on the things which help you to make the khushu'ah, then when you, work, uh, when you work on these two uh, sides, then bi'idhnillah you will reach the khushu'ah. And Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah spoke about details of this. With regard to the first, <clears throat> the strong desire to do what is obligatory. This means that a person strives hard to focus on what he is saying and doing, pondering with the meaning of the Quran recitation, dhikr and du'as, and keeping in mind that the fact that he is speaking to Allah as if he sees him. For when he is standing in prayer, He's talking to his Lord. Ihsan means that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as if you see him. And if you cannot see him, he can see you. The more the slave tasted the sweetness of salah, the more attracted he will be to it. And this has to do with the strength of his iman. Now, this statement, brothers, is very important. And as I mentioned at the beginning, different scholars, they spoke about how you prepare yourself for the Salah. Now, Sheikh Islam here, he mentioned, remember that when you do this, you are doing fard, you do, and you are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we think about what we say in the Salah, every single thing we say in the Salah, it, it is addressed to Allah. You say, Allahu Akbar. You are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are saying, oh Allah, you are the greatest. One beautiful word of Sheikh Imam al-Ghazali on this, he said, 
when you say Allahu Akbar, you have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest of everything. So anything you compare it to Allah is nothing. Yeah. Your family, nothing. Your job, nothing. Your business, nothing. Your children, nothing. Your life, nothing. It, the minute you say Allahu Akbar, you have to think that, is there anything des deserved to talk about now or to think about? I am saying Allahu Akbar. So when I am saying Allahu Akbar, this means that everything else is asghar. Less. So when I'm saying Allahu Akbar, I have to fulfill this word. I have to say it right. How can I say Allahu Akbar? Then I think about my wife or my family or my business or my uh, school or, or anything else. Because when I compare them to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all these things, they are nothing. I have to fulfill saying Allahu Akbar. I start salah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Or Allahumma ba'ad bayna wa bayna khataya. Or wajjahtu wajji illa di fatah al-samawat al-arab. All these dua al-istiftah. Think about them, brothers. This is, you remember, when we, when we explained these things, we said, in every dua you are saying in the salah, there is a great meaning. You have to understand the meaning. This will help you to concentrate in your salah, to have khushua. You are saying to Allah, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Here you are talking to Allah. Is there any one of us, brothers, accepted that you talk to someone here, you talk to someone, and the other one, instead of looking at you and listening to you, he is, yeah, yeah, okay, holding the phone, this, doing that. You say, what's this? This is so rude. I am talking to you. I'm talking to you. You saying to Allah, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. You are talking to Allah. You say, Oh Allah, I glorify you. You are saying to him, I glorify you. So how, how you will glorify Allah by you are saying, Oh Allah, I glorify you. But uh, there is something, you know, at business. This is what you, you have to be trustworthy here. We are talking to Allah who is observing us. You say, A'udhu Billahi min ash shaytan rajim I seek Allah's protection from the cursed shaytan. Here again, you are talking to Allah. You seek the protection. You have to be awake when you say this. Because if you are awake, if you are not awake, if you are not fully talking and you are concentrating 100%, this doesn't work. You have, when you say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, then you have to be aware of what you are saying. Because if you say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, and you are thinking about other things, the shaitan starts laughing. You are seeking Allah's protection from me and then there. I'm playing with you. Then we'll come to the to the Fatiha. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi in the long hadith. Let me find just the translation of this. So, in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi, Qasamtu al-Salata bayni wa bayna abdu. Fa'idha qala al-abdu, Alhamdulillah, qala Allah hamadani abdu. Thumma idha qala, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, qala Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Majjadani abdu. Thumma idha qala, Malik Yawm Al-Din, qala Athna Alayya abdu. Iyaka ala na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in, qala hadha, لعبدي أو بيني وبين عبدي ولا عبدي ما سأل اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قال الله هذا لعبدي ولا عبدي ما سأل الحديث إن البخاري والله أعلم
So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said that I divided the salah between me and my servant. When he said Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, all praise and thanks be to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala say, My slave praised me. Then he said Rahman Rahim. He say Allah uh, the, the slave in a meaning he he knows me and he praises me praised me again. Then when it reaches after saying Ya Kana Abdu Ya Kana Stain, you only we worship and we only we see we see kill. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, This is between me and my servant, and for my servant what we he will ask. Then you start asking. Guide us to the straight path. Sirat al The path of those who you bestowed your favor on. غير المغضوب عليه not those that uh, uh, you are angry with them or they gain your anger ولا الضالين or those who went astray so in every word here at the beginning of the surah you are talking to Allah you say to him I praise you O Allah now when you have to say it you have to be aware of what you are saying then you are making dua you are saying, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ You are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to the straight path. It doesn't, it doesn't work that you're saying, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And you think, oh, have I finished that job or not? It doesn't work. Oh, what I'm going to do tomorrow or tonight? Have I, have I completed my uh, assignment or not? No, it doesn't work. So what I like to say, brothers, here, that we have to understand that when you pray, you are standing in front of Allah. Every word you say, you are praising Him, you are talking to Him. Now you have, you have to understand this, because when you understand this, this will make your life, will change your life, will change the way that you are praying. When from now on you think, yeah, I'm saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil I'm talking to Allah, so I have to be full aware of what I'm saying. I have to be humble. I am asking him to guide me. I have to be humble. I have to put his love in my heart. I cannot ask him to help me, to guide me, if I am thinking about misguidance. I cannot ask him to help me if I am not appreciating what I am saying, I cannot ask him to guide me if my heart is occupied by this dunya and by the desires and by the other things. I have to clean this heart and fill it with khushu'ah. So when I say, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم, I say it in the bottom of my heart. And Allah, Samir Mujib, they all here. He answer your call and he will guide you definitely with no doubt when you say اهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ from your heart he will guide you because he said that وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنْهَدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا those who strive for us will guide them so you have a guarantee but you have to work you have to do it you have to start this is the key of the khushu' the key of the khushu' is to understand when you stand there and if you are in front of Allah every single word you say in your salah you are talking to him you say in your ruku' subhana rabbi al-azim Allahu Akbar you are, you are glorifying Allah the greatest how can I glorify Allah the greatest if I am thinking about the lowest doesn't work. Even if the shaitan comes to me and try to say, uh, I am saying, Subhan Rabbi al azim what other things? The other things is not azim Nothing. I say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah listened to those who praise him. I am saying this. I am saying, Oh Allah, I am praising you. How can I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the words come only from my mouth? 
It must come from here, from my heart. Yes, I, oh, oh Allah, I praise you. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. When I say this word, I can imagine everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed over me. All the benefits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me. All the things. I, at least, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he helped me to make this rak'ah. Because there is many people on earth, they are not guided to do this rak'ah. And maybe this rak'ah, this rak'ah or two rak'ah will be your salvation on the day of judgment. These two rak'ah. One of the other things to help for making khushu' is to remember the death. Abu Ayyub radiallahu an he asked the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for advice. And he said to him, Salli salata muwadda. Salli salata muwadda. When you pray, Pray as this pray is your last one. Believe me, brothers, if myself and everyone in this bliss circle think in the same way, I am sure 100% every one of us will change the way that we are praying. Just imagine the two rak'ahs you are doing, or the four rak'ahs you are you're doing, are your last two or four rak'ahs in your life. And after that, let's finish. You are not going to do it anymore. So definitely, every one of us will think I have to make these two rak'ah the most beautiful two rak'ahs I prayed in my life. Because I will not have the opportunity to, to purify it more, or make it more beautiful, more have more khushu in it. And this is one of the things that when you think all the time about this might be my last breath, my last day, my last salah, then many of your actions will be corrected easily. <clears throat> Another thing that will help us to make for sure is to prepare, to prepare us, to prepare ourselves before the salah. You remember the hadith we mentioned that the Nabi Sallallahu said that the one who make proper wudu then make proper salah then he will have a guarantee from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him jannah. So when you start from the wudu your wudu is according to the sunnah. Your wudu is perfect. You don't leave any part of your uh, wudu part without proper washing. Then you come to the masjid and you pray the two rakats in the masjid and you sit in the masjid remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you try to come a little bit earlier. The Nabi sallallahu he said لو يعلم الناس ما في الأذان وما في الصف الأول لاستهموا عليه. If the people they know the benefits of the first line in the masjid and the benefits of the adhan, maybe they will fight for that. So you have to have what they call it همة. And the همة, not the desire, to be dedicated to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have this himma, it will help you, push you all the time to do good. 
And the mu'min must have all the time him aliyah, high. This him will push him to the masjid, will push, push him to do the salah, will push him to do the good deeds. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that if the people, they know the benefits in the first row in the masjid, they will fight for it. Now what this means that these people, they try to prepare themselves for the salah. Because the one who comes earlier, he's relaxed. Maybe he reads some du'as, reads some Quran. So even if there is something in mind before the salah, it will be discharged. And he's sitting there for one purpose. Remember this brother. When he's sitting in the masjid for that purpose, this will charge the heart now. Looking for when the Imam say, قد, or, or the Muaddin say, قد قام الصلاة. He's waiting for that minute, minute to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you come earlier to the masjid, this will help you to discharge your brain, your heart from the other things and get ready for the salah. And when you are in the masjid and hear the adhan and say with the mu'adhan what they say, then you finish by Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma rabba da'wat tam wa salat al-qa'ima ati Muhammadan wa sila tu al-fadil wa ba'at al-maqam al-mahmud al-ladhi wa'atta. Then when you say this, again, this will increase your iman because now you are thinking about the reward. That the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said for that dua, that the one who will say this dua, he will be guaranteed that, that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will intercede for him. So all this will build up your iman, your yaqeen, your heart filled up now with all these iman, iman things which will occupy your heart more, more and more. Then when the Imam start, start the Salah and you hear what he's saying, you think about the ayahs. And this is why uh, most of the A'imma advised us, encouraged us to understand the Qur'an. And this is why there is, you'll find tafsir of Qur'an. Why the people made all these efforts to make tafsir? Why? Just think about it, brother. Now, Muslims, these days, we spoke about this before, you know, all of them, they send their children to the madrasa. MashaAllah, they memorize the Quran from Al-Fatiha to, to Nas. But they have no clue what's in, in between Al-Fatiha and Al-Nas. They, they don't know. And this is one of our shortcomings. And I encourage everyone sitting here to start learn Arabic. Because when you start learn Arabic, then you start taste the Quran. Believe me, believe me, brothers. I am an Arab. And I read the translation. Even I read the articles in, in English and these things. It tastes different. It tastes different. When you read the hadith, when you read the ayah and contemplate in it, and you read translations, different translations, sometimes when I read the translation, I say, you know, the sweetness of that ayah lost. Because when you read it in Arabic and understand it in Arabic, because the Quran revealed in Arabic and the effect on it, and all the people before, they used to learn Arabic, and, and you know this, anyone came from, any, any, from Africa, from Asia, the people, the scholars, they must, you will not find a scholar considered as a scholar if he doesn't speak Arabic. He has to speak and understand, because to understand the Hadith and to understand, you have to understand the Arabic language. Now the people, because they found all these translations, and now they're translating the books and these things, and we are making lessons now in, in, in English. This is, why shall I bother to learn in Arabic? If I have a sheikh 
you know, explaining it in English. I have books in English and not in English, in French, uh, Japanese, all, all these languages. So the people start to stay away from Arabic, only few people. Uh, so. But from my, my experience, when you start learning the Arabic, you can, you can taste, taste the things uh, in, in different ways. And it's not difficult. There are some people, they try to say Arabic is so difficult, so difficult language. And why the people, they say it's so difficult? Because if somebody brought up and speaks English, so obviously he will find English is easy, simple. When he try, if you try to le learn German, maybe you'll think, oh, German is so hard. Because in German, there is feminine and uh, masculine. We don't have in English feminine and masculine. In Arabic, the same. One of my friends, you know, because he, he's not Arabic, he's Turkish, but uh, mashallah, he, he learned Arabic. He said, when I started learning German, it was so easy for me. Because the same rules apply. Feminine, masculine, and all, all these uh, uh, pronouns and these things, all of them apply in the same language. So I found it so easy for me to apply the, gra the grammar. Because the people, when they start to learn Arabic, the, the main thing which make them you know, find it uh, uh, difficult, the grammar. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Quran, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْمِ الْمُتَكَرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the Quran is easy to learn. Is there any, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, is there anyone like to learn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this, not me. So, when you have the intention to learn, and I can see it through my students, when you have the intention to learn, you will learn. Because there is a guarantee from Allah Anyone, he make the effort to learn anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make it easy for you. There is no doubt. If you'd like to learn Arabic for the sake of Allah, Allah will make it easy for you. Allah will help you, make you understand better. But you have to make, to make the, the intention. So, and this will help you in the subject we are talking about. So, when you understand the eyes, at least if you start, you know, the main things, if you read the translation of, of, of Al-Fatiha, understand it fully. Again, the other, the, the short surahs that you are, you are saying from time to time. I'm saying, Subhanahu Rabbi Al-Azim, what's Subhanahu Rabbi Al-Azim? What's the tahiyyatu? What's Allahumma salli ala Muhammad? What's all these duas? So when you know them, this will help you in the khushua. Because if you start, if you st uh, stand for the salah and you just press the button, this is finished. It is just a button. It is a recorder. And that recorder doesn't understand anything you say. You just say it. You don't feel it. One of the other things that will help you in, in, in the khushu'a and this was the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make variety of the surahs and the du'as you are saying in the Salah. Because the brain, SubhanAllah, it is you program. So if you program this du'a, uh, like, like the route of, from the house to the masjid, so maybe the first day you look here and here, you'd like to find, is this the right word? But after two, three days, you sit there, you'll find yourself in the masjid. You don't think that much because the brain now made the route, planned it, planned it there, and it guides you to, to, uh, without a lot of thinking. The same the salah. If you would like to say in your salah, so maybe the first day you think about it, the second day, then after that you say automatically without thinking. Even you don't choose it. So the brain will say, because you are thinking somewhere else, and the brain automatically 
say tabat ya dabi la bin wa go now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make this variation so in fajr he fajr al-juma for example sajda thalat ayam sometimes tur al-waqi'a al-mursalat so in 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 dhuhr he used to read about 30 ayat in asr less less than this about half of it in maghrib one of the sahabiyat ridwan allah alayhi she said i remember in the last days of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to surah al read to surah al mursalat and i haven't heard anyone reciting it better than the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mursalat two pages in in this mushaf mushaf al madina so in maghrib and you'll find in most masajid al maghrib they say qul huwa qul a'udhu bi rabbil falq wa a'udhu bin nas li ila fi quraysh wal asri so too short nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam made it longer so we when you make in every salah uh, different surahs this will make you alert when you choose the surah that you like to read but when you leave it to the root in your brain then you'll say it automatically and then you maybe you remember yourself in the fourth rak'ah you don't know what you read this is again to do with al-adhkar so Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, you say it, then you can vary. You can once say, Subbuh Qudusar Makru, Allahumma lak rakat, wa bika amant, wa alayka tawakkal. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, wa bihamdi. Subhanak Allahumma Rabbana, wa bihamdi, ka Allahumma qfili. So, do this, this in the first, the second, the third. This will make you again concentrate, concentrate on your salah more and more. The same with التحيات. You can once use تشاهد ابن مسعود. You remember when we explained these. تشاهد ابن مسعود. تشاهد ابن عباس. تشاهد عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه. So when you vary between these, this will make you try to remember now. And when you try to remember, you are awake. So this is one of the ways also to make you awake while you are while you are uh, praying. And uh, one of the things that just I missed, uh, missed during, read, during reading, to follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was reading. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he used to read, he used to read the ayah and stop, pause. So the hadith, الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم and this will give you time but when you say it like sometimes you hear some imams they say it in one go or two go الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين then اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. So when when the people say it quickly, so even the people who are behind the imam, they don't have enough time to reflect what he say. But when the imam say الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم and when they describe the way that the Prophet Sallallahu used to, uh, to read, يفسرها حرفا حرفا. He will make it clear letter by letter. Even the letters, the Nabi Sallallahu used to make it clear. So the people behind him, they will understand what he's saying. And also to make your, your voice beautiful uh, as much uh, as, as you can. So, Make, make a difference between the, the normal speech that you are saying and the way that you are reciting, reciting uh, the Qur'an. One of the things that will uh, improve the khushu'ah is the sutra in the salah. 
You remember, brothers, when we spoke about sutra, and it is one of the most recommended or one of the recommended things in, in the salah. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you pray, so pray to a sutra, a barrier, and be close uh, to it. And we explain the clothes that you, you keep uh, a distance for, for your sujood and just uh, a little, a little Now, when the sutra is clear, when there is sutra, there is different, many benefits. The first thing, it will prevent the people of passing in front of you. You don't think, oh, they will pass or not. The other thing, when there is uh, sutra, you are concentrating on your uh, sujood place. But if there is other thing in front of you, this will distract you. You remember we mentioned this in the previous lesson, when the Nabi وسلم, prayed and Aisha covered part of the wall with, uh, with that sheet or uh, fabric and there is, there is pictures in it in Nabi Sallallahu he hated this and he took it off and he said ما زال تعرض لي في صلاتي it disturbed me in my salah so when you pray try to be in, in, in a place that the sutra is clear there is not, nothing to disturb you don't pray where there is writings or uh, maybe newspapers or uh, signs in the wall because we are human beings so if there is signs or these things maybe you think oh and you start reading the, the signs so be sure when you are praying that the things in front of you are clear and there is there is sutra this will prevent prevent the shaitan from coming uh, from coming to you, inshallah. And also, when you follow the Prophet sallallahu in the salah by placing the right hand on the left hand, the Prophet sallallahu said when he stood up to pray, he used to place his right hand on his left hand, and this is a Muslim, and place them on his chest, Abu Dawood. The Messenger of Allah uh, sallallahu said. We prophets were commanded to place our right hands on our left hands in prayer. And this reported by Al Tabarani. The Imam Ahmad said was asked about the meaning of placing one hand on top of the other when standing in prayer. He said, It is a humility before the Almighty. So when you do like this, you show your, your, your humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way that you show that you are humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Hajar rahmatullah alayhi said, the ulama said, the meaning of the posture is that uh, it is the attitude of the humble uh, people. It is more likely to prevent uh, fidgeting and it's more conducive to khushua. And this mentioned on Fath uh, al-Bari. The other thing is to look at your uh, finger in, in the tashahud. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the hadith that when you move your finger during the tashahud, he said, لَهِيَ أَشَدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ It is ha more harm with the shaitan more than the iron. So if you hit the shaitan with the bar of iron, this will be more than that. So and the sunnah is to keep moving it during the whole tashahud and look at it. And this was the uh, way of Prophet Muhammad And this again, you are looking to something in the salah in itself. So there will be a link between the, the finger, the brain, and, and the heart. These are rather some of the ideas uh, to improve our khushu' in our in our salah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among the people who have khushu' in their salah 
أقول قولي هذا واتقوا الله لي ولكم وأخرج عوانها الحمد لله رب العالمين